Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again. And ladies and gents, we are already in the championship round of the NFL playoffs. And oh boy, what an exciting playoff this has been in the NFL. Ton of upsets. M much of them have come by way of the team playing in the first game on Sunday. But just a quick little preface I'd like everyone to notice the fact that. We're not doing the usual recording setup. I'm not playing on my PC, uh, recording my PC copy of Madden 20. I'm actually recording Madden 20 on Xbox One in 4K with the Elgato 4K streaming software. I got a new motherboard. I got the software. And it's just, it's been a blast. And I'm so excited that now, finally, I get to bring you guys console gameplay in console live stream so we'll hopefully get uh, get some fun going there ASAP but we've got more pressing news or more pressing matters to attend to and they would be the firstly the American Football Conference Championship game Sunday at 3.05 p.m. as the six seed Tennessee Titans take on the two seed Kansas City Chiefs so in this little playoff rivalry that we've seen over the past few years the Titans oh, excuse me the road team has won each of the last three meetings in the playoffs that is and the last time these two teams met in the playoffs Marcus Mariota threw a touchdown pass to himself which was which was quite something but Earlier in this same regular season, the Titans actually beat the Chiefs, if you may remember. Uh, that was the first game back for Patrick Mahomes after the injury, so obviously he wasn't 100%. But, you know, you still got to go out there, execute, and do your job. They didn't, and they got beat by Tennessee. And now they've got th this guy coming in, Derrick Henry, who every time he hits the 100-yard mark, the Titans have won. So, they... <laughs> They've got a, a tall task ahead of them, and you know everything the Ravens said about, you know, everybody's afraid to tackle Derrick Henry, but we aren't. And then literally, Derrick Henry turned Earl Thomas into a lead blocker for him. So I don't know what that tells you about either Earl Thomas or the the greatness of Derrick Henry, but it's just it's it's been an incredible ride to see the Titans go basically from obscurity at Week Eight, pretty much wrote them off to now playing in the AFC Championship game after two road playoff wins against the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots. Like, that just that doesn't happen. I, I love seeing wildcard teams go on runs. I think it's the most exciting thing in sports is when you take a six seed or a five seed and they can go on a stretch run and potentially win a Super Bowl. And all they have to do is be better than Kansas City for 60 minutes and they can advance to the Super Bowl. But as we saw last week, Kansas City can explode on a dime because they were in a 24-point hole against Houston, and Houston blew it, and they got 50 dropped on them. Like, Kansas City can and will explode on you. And Tennessee, they need to be much better on defense than, uh, than the Texans were, and the Texans haven't been great at all all year on defense but in order to stop Patrick Mahomes you're gonna have to play just regularly sound fundamental defense I mean you can't get too far out of your assignments you can't try to get tricky you know you just you gotta play to your strengths understand your weaknesses know the strengths and the weaknesses of your opponent and there's very few when it comes to Kansas City very few weaknesses that is but obviously priorities are gonna be limiting Tyreek Hill Keeping Patrick Mahomes in the pocket, just you know the small stuff like that that you want to you want to write that on your on your whiteboard, but it never ever seems to work. But if there's one team that I have faith in to do it, it's got to be Tennessee. I mean, the win against New England, you know, a lot of people are saying that's impressive, impressive, impressive. But that New England team is nothing compared to the ones we've seen in years past. So I was kind of like, okay. They beat New England and Foxborough, but this isn't the same Patriots team we've seen for years. And then what they did in Baltimore was astounding. Like, I was waiting for that Baltimore comeback to happen. 
and it never did. And Tennessee just kept the foot on the throat. And Derrick Henry literally ran Lamar Jackson and, and his company to the Pro Bowl. <laughs> like, they could have been playing for a Super Bowl, but no. Now Lamar Jackson's going to start the Pro Bowl. Like, that, that's incredible. Basically because of one dude. And that'd be Derrick Henry. So, it's just, it, this is a tough game to call. Because obviously, you know, you, you want to pick the Chiefs. Because on paper, they're the much stronger matchup. The much favorable no, oh, excuse me there. <clears throat> but they're the much more favorable matchup to take. But when you look at Tennessee, they've just they've won however many games in a row on the road. And you know, I, I believe in, in in numbers, so if each of the if the road team has won each of their last three playoff games, then Tennessee's the road team. So obviously anything can happen in football but I'm pretty excited I get to watch this game with my mom tomorrow my mom uh, grew up a Kansas City Chiefs fan so she's rooting for them to go to the Super Bowl and I, I've loved what the Titans have done over the past month and a half so I'm, I'm going with the Titans in my heart but in my head I'm picking Kansas City they're just a smart safe play and I mean I wouldn't be I wouldn't mind being proven wrong but like you can't take Tennessee right now I mean I just, you can't do it Anybody that does is just doing it for the sake of being different. You know what I mean? Because logically, every single human on the planet should pick Kansas City to win this football game. Unless you're a Titans fan. But in that case, you know, good luck to you. And I uh, hope it all works out on Sunday. So I'm going with the Chiefs. Then, the National Football Conference Championship will kick off at 6.40 p.m. on Sunday with the number two seed Green Bay Packers visiting the number one seed San Francisco 49ers. So, a lot of the year, you know, I have given for, uh, San Francisco a lot of flack for not utilizing Jimmy Garoppolo as a weapon. You know, I didn't think that he was the kind of quarterback to carry your team. And then the game in the Superdome happens where he just lights up the Saints defense. You know, and, and, but then, like, they lose to Atlanta. On, a, on the last play of the game, and I get it. Like, I understand why that happened. Because uh, Atlanta scored more points. That's why they won. Thanks, Booger. Oh, Booger McFarlane is the best. But, um, oh, my dog's growling. Murphy, you want to relax? I'm recording a video, man. He doesn't care about nothing. Murphy, relax. Okay. And uh, Green Bay, everybody knows offensively. Murphy, relax. But everybody knows offensively, Green Bay has not looked the same as they have in years past. And a lot of people, just because they hate Aaron Rodgers, want to put the blame on Aaron Rodgers. And I think that's unfair. Because... What is your issue? He is... I've never seen him act like this before. So I, I don't know what the hell is going on. But, um... Thanks for sidetracking me, a-hole. But the Packers, you, you can't really put all their blames on Aaron Rodgers. It's a first-year head coach with a first-year offense in play. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I don't think he's ever worn a QB, uh, like, like that QB wrap on his wrist, and he's got one on this year because it's just easier for him to call the plays in a new offense with that on. And the defense, I mean, has really carried the group because if, if the offense can't score... 21 to beat another team's 20 you're gonna have to rely on the defense to get a turnover or create some points just something and anything in week 17 I didn't think Green Bay looked looked particularly good at all against Detroit um, and they still had you know they still had something to play for in that game because if the cards fell right they could have made the number one seed this could have been a playoff game in Green Bay right now for the NFC Championship, but instead we're going to California. And I, you know, I love how this all shaped out because Aaron Rodgers grew up a San Francisco 49ers fan. When he went to the draft, the, ni the Niners were picking first. It was between Aaron Rodgers and Alex Smith. Rodgers thought, I am the safe, sure bet at number one. I'm going to San Francisco and I'm going to play for the San Francisco 49ers. And the Niners just pull the rug out from everybody and they draft Alex Smith. 
and Aaron Rodgers falls almost out of the first round, and he gets picked by Green Bay. And they were like, are you disappointed, you know, that you weren't picked by San Francisco? And Rodgers just said, not as disappointed as, as they will be that they didn't pick me. And, like, that kind of chip-on-your-shoulder stuff, I love. I love it. And if he takes that mentality into Santa Clara on Sunday, I mean, the Packers are going to be unstoppable. Like, if Aaron Rodgers plays the best game of his life on Sunday, they will be unstoppable. Because everybody and their mother knows how great Aaron Rodgers is. That's not up for debate. He is, in my opinion, the greatest quarterback of all time. Working with nothing. Carrying his team to wins. Like, he didn't have the, a great team built around him for success. It was Aaron Rodgers, and you make the damn thing work. And he won a Super Bowl like that. And I know the defense that year was really good. But he won a Super Bowl with his head coaches thinking, oh, we can just plug Aaron Rodgers in and make everybody better. But, I mean, that's just the greatness of Aaron Rodgers. I don't know what to tell you. But this game on Sunday is a rematch of a regular season game, just like the AFC Championship. So we, we've already seen these two teams go at it. And in that regular season game, the Packers got destroyed. They got embarrassed, okay? I mean, I really want to know what the final score of that game was because it was bad. It, it, was, it was pretty bad. But, but, I mean, then you think about it. Both teams finished with a 13-3 record. So I don't really know, like, what the hell to expect out of these teams. And, and their last meeting, it was a, a Niners win, 37-8. to eight. So, the Niners rolled them last time. What is this? Oof, my bad. But, yeah, it was a complete wash by the 49ers. And just Aaron Rodgers didn't play well, and he's going to have to play a lot better on Sunday. But, I mean, with that being said, the Niners have done incredible things on both sides of the ball. But then, you know, again, they played the Falcons, and that wasn't a great game for them. But they're going to need... They're going to need to put, uh, you know, forth their best effort of the season. Both these teams will. And we, we know what they're capable of offensively and defensively. Both these teams are very good. You know, that's just playoff football. May the better team win. But I like the 49ers in this matchup. I just think that they are, I think that they're more equipped to win this game, especially having already beaten Green Bay once. So I'm going with San Francisco. And ladies and gentlemen, those are my picks for the division or for the championship round of the NFL playoffs. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Please make sure to hit that comment. Please make sure to comment, hit that like button, and subscribe for more great video gaming content, which will be coming to you soon. So thank you guys for watching. It's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I'll catch you guys.